My name is Kelly. I think I've met most of you guys and probably annoyed you already. Um, it's part of the plan. But uh, I work at a small church just outside of Richmond, Virginia. It's actually a church plant, and we meet in a YMCA. And we have the goal of reaching a lot of people uh, with the good news of what Jesus has done on the cross. And so I spend a lot of time hanging out with young people like you guys, uh, doing things with music, and just trying to be involved in the community and helping people uh, come to know uh, Jesus and to understand what he has done for them. So this week we're going to spend time in God's Word, and we're especially going to spend time making a big deal out of him. Because I think it's so easy for us to go through uh, our regular everyday activities and think that life is about us. But in reality, it is about Jesus. It is about our God because he's the one who created everything that we see. He's the one who invented you and your personality. And ultimately, he is the reason that we are here at Chehi. So we're going to have a great week together, hanging out, enjoying band and orchestra, choir, all those things, uh, but I hope that you guys are also excited about learning from God's Word and understanding what He has to teach you, uh, because there is nothing more important than that. So, to start this off, I'm curious if I could uh, see who's awake this morning. If you're super awake, can you stick up your hand? Okay, oh wow, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. All right, of you guys who are super awake, how many of you guys like candy? Mmm. Mmm. All right, Ansel, why don't you come up here? We got to start this morning off with some excitement. So, I have some some dum dums. Um, seems appropriate. So, <laughs> anyways, my question is, do you like, you know, dum dums? Yeah. You're a fan. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. Uh, can you describe the love, you know, in some sort of poetic way, how you feel about them? I just want to lick them. You just want to lick them? <laughs> okay. That's disturbing, but that's okay. Um, do you like candy or dum-dums more than some certain other foods? Yeah. You would choose this over something else? Yeah. Like what? Mm. <laughs> A lot of stuff. Okay, a lot of stuff. That's good. Like half. You think this is in your top half of things you might choose? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. All right, so I'm going to make you an offer, okay? So you can have either a bag of dum-dums or you can have this one lonely grape dum-dum. You can only pick this or this. Which one are you going to go for? The choice is obvious. The choice is obvious. Okay, so why did you choose that? Because it's worth more. Because it's worth more. Because it is more, right? Because yeah. there's a lot more going on in that. All right, so why is it better to have more? You can share it with others. You can share it with others? What about because it's good? You can hog it by yourself. <laughs> That's true. You could do that if you were mean, but he, he might share with some of you guys because he's nice like that. Okay, well, that's cool. So now that you have those and we've established that you love those, you get to eat them or share them or decorate your room with them or, you know, whatever you want to do with these because they belong to you now. Mm -hmm. All right, that's cool. You can sit down. Thank you. You guys should ask him for those. If he eats all these, it'll be bad for his teeth. Um, all right, so basically what he explained to us that's pretty obvious is having one lollipop is pretty good. But if you can get a whole bag, it is better. If you can have a little bit, that's pretty good. But if you can get even more, it doesn't even compare. It's so much better. Like you guys said, the choice was obvious. Do you think anyone would say, no, I'll just take this one, when they could have 37 and a little piece, that w whatever was in that bag? Would anyone choose the one? Probably not, right? Everyone's going for the whole bag because there is just so much more there. There's, there's enough to eat, there's enough to share, there's enough to save some for later. It's just great to have more if you have the choice. And I think we can all agree that in most things in life, if we can get a little bit more of it, we appreciate that. You know, we don't normally stop at the bare minimum. Like, how many of you guys uh, ever watch TV? Yeah, uh, got a favorite show, anyone? What's your favorite show? SpongeBob. Okay, 
<laughs> SpongeBob is great. Excellent theme song. A lot of information about striped sweaters. Good stuff going on. Um, okay, so if you watch SpongeBob, do you ever sit down and be like, man, I'm excited to watch some SpongeBob? You know, so you're there. You got your, you know, your bag of Cheetos because that's what you need to watch SpongeBob. You know, you nom nom nom, and. Uh, you're eating the Cheetos and you're like, man, I'm so excited this Spongebob episode is going to be one of my favorites. I know it's going to be good. You turn it on and you watch like the first minute and a half and then you say, okay, I've had enough. Whew. I got my Spongebob fill. Do you do that? No. You watch the beginning and then it sets it all up and then you watch the whole rest of the show, right? The whole half hour. The whole half hour. Right. You don't sit down and, and watch the beginning and then see how it all gets set up. You watch the whole thing. Yeah. And that plays out that way for like all TV shows or books or movies, right? You see the beginning, there's some sort of issue or conflict, something that you want to see how it gets resolved, and nobody goes, okay, well, that's good. I think I've had enough of this show or I've had enough of this book. No, you're like, man, I want to see how it goes. I want to see how it ends. You want to get more instead of just, just getting the bare minimum or getting the beginning. Or think about it like this. Um, most of you guys don't drive, but some of you do, people in the back driving. Um, do you think it makes sense to, if you had to get gas, to go to a gas station and say, man, I see another gas station down the street over there, so I only need to get enough to make it, you know, a hundred yards because I know that I can get more. How many, of you, how many of you guys have parents that say, man, I see a gas station down there, so I'm just going to put a quarter of a quarter of a tank in here? Anybody do that? What do you, what do, you do when, not for budgetary reasons, Aaron. Um, um, what do you do when you go to a gas station? You fill it up, right? You fill it all the way up if, if you can because you don't want to be having to stop later and fill it up uh, again and take up more time getting out of your car or if you're in New Jersey letting somebody else come near your car, whatever. Um, but you don't want to do all that. You want to get it filled up. And when you, when you love something or when you need something, whether it's whether you want candy or whether you want to watch a show or whether you need gas, most of the time we don't want to settle for the bare minimum. Most of the time we want to go big, we want to get as much out of it as we can, especially when it's something that we need. You know, like if you guys have ever been really thirsty, you know, playing some frisbee or something later on today, losing to my team, you might want to get some, a drink after and so, you know, not many of you guys are going to come in and take your water bottle and be like, let me just fill up a little cap full. <laughs> I'm so refreshed. Like, nobody does that. You, you'll be, you know, chugging it, right? Because cause you're thirsty. You're trying to fill up. You're trying to, you know, get what you need. And that applies to our spiritual lives, too. And uh, with Christ, sadly, a lot of times in our relationship with him, we actually do the opposite. We consider what the bare minimum is, and then we try to meet it. And, th and that is sad. We, but we choose a lot of times to just scrape by. And we'll say words or sing words that say that we love him, but when it comes to really how much or how that plays out in our lives, if we examined it, we'd see that we love a lot of things more than we actually love him. And that in many cases, we just do the smallest amount possible to squeak by. And since we need him, we ought to reconsider this. We ought to rethink why this happens in our lives. Because if we are willing to go all out and say one whole bag of candy is better than one piece of candy, candy is good, but it is no comparison to the incredible God of the universe who wants to have a relationship with you. So why is it when we have a choice between a, a little bit of a relationship with God or a you know, a shallow relationship with God and a deep, strong, vibrant, real, and meaningful relationship with God, a lot of times what we do is we say, well, you know, I'll just squeak by or I'll get to that later or, or other things like that. And it's sad that that's the, the society that we live in or the culture that our churches have in a lot of cases, especially with young people because there's so many things uh, that call for our attention. There's so many things that, that pull pull on us, you know, and who are calling for our, our love and our time and our emotion and our commitment. And so what we do is we choose those things a lot of times instead of Christ. And that doesn't really seem like love to me. And if that is love that we have for Christ when we choose other things over him, it's pretty weak and it's pretty sad. And in many cases it's cheap. 
And that's not where we want to be because we know that the God of the universe, the King of kings, chose to leave heaven and all of his glory and become a man and live on this messed up earth with extremely broken people like you and me and ultimately pay the price for our sins by dying on the cross for our sins. Dying on the cross for you so that he could make a way to know you and to be with you forever. That doesn't sound like he's interested in a cheap relationship. That doesn't sound like he's interested in a halfway relationship. That doesn't seem like he wants you to just do enough to squeak by. If somebody is willing to die to be with you, you can guarantee that they desire more than anything to be with you. And that is exactly what God has done for us. God says to us, I love you. And a lot of times we respond by going, oh, okay, that's nice. Or he says, you know, I died to save you because I want to be with you forever. And we say, well, I guess I don't want to go to hell, so I guess I'll tolerate a relationship with you so I can get into heaven if that's what I have to do. Or he says, you know, I will be with you always, even through the hardest times of life. And we say, you know, God, sometimes I wish you'd just leave me alone. I wish you'd let me just do my thing. And that's tragic, that we would be people who see the gift of the gospel, the good news of what Jesus did for us on the cross, and in a lot of ways, we don't want to accept it into our lives. And I know that that sounds a little bit harsh, that here on day one, I'm handing out candy, and the next, you know, the next second, I'm going, something is wrong with you. But the reality is that something is wrong with each and every one of us, and that is why Jesus had to come. And we struggle in this world with sin and with selfishness and with pride. But when we think of what Jesus has done for us, when we consider the cross, we have to understand that it changes all of that. So as we continue to talk and we dig into the Bible here in a second, I want you guys to consider, do you love God or do you tolerate God? Is he the center of your life or is he an add-on? Do you want to spend time with him? Or do you feel like you have to spend time with him? Do you really love God? Do you really understand the love that he has for you? And sadly, I can tell you from my life, there's been a lot of times when that has not been true. When I have been going through the motions or playing the game or feeling like I was doing what I was obligated to do, not because I felt like I really loved God. But there is such a stark difference between truly following Christ and having a relationship with him that means the world to you than just playing the church game. All right. And one of the biggest reasons that we don't really live for Christ and give him everything we've got and really value the relationship that we have with him is because we don't always understand what he is trying to do. I see you with a hand sanitizer. Excellent. Um... All right, we don't understand what he's trying to accomplish in our lives. And, and the sad thing is, we feel like a lot of times that Christianity is defined by rules and things that we can't do. We think that God is saying, you can't do that, you can't be that, you can't think like that, you can't act like that, don't be like that. And it seems like God is always telling us what we can't do. And we feel like a lot of times that he's trying to take away our fun or he's trying to limit us with rules or that he's putting obstacles in our way that keep us from having a normal life. And you think that he's trying to take things away from us. And one of the biggest misconceptions about Christianity is that our God is someone who takes things away from us. Can I tell you that Jesus didn't need any of us? That when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, it wasn't so that he could get something. He doesn't need a relationship with you. He's not lonely. But he did it because he cares about you. And we have this misconception that God is always interested in taking. And believe me, he deserves the glory. And we'll talk about that uh, later on in this message. But one of the most defining qualities about our God is that he is the greatest giver of all time. And if you have a Bible, you should turn it to Colossians chapter 3. And we're going we're gonna to read Colossians 3, verse 16. And I'll give you a second to get there, but this verse has so much packed into it. This verse is just incredible. And we could stick in this verse probably all week. We won't. But let me just read this. 
Colossians 3.16, it says, Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. Okay, do you guys hear, what, hear that? Or read that? Or understand that? This is a really amazing thing. It says, let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Does he sound like a giver or a taker if he has a message full of richness that can fill up your life? Is that a giver or a taker? A giver. A giver. Yeah, absolutely. And then it says, teach and counsel each other with the wisdom that he gives. Does he sound like a giver or a taker? A giver. A giver. Yeah, and then it says, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And if we have something to be thankful for, does he sound like a giver or a taker? Giver. Yeah, he sounds like a giver. And we're, let me just read a couple other verses and we'll get back to this. But from John 3, 16 and 17, you guys probably know these. It says, for God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son, that to everyone who believes in him, they will not perish but have eternal life. And God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. If God gave his son, does he sound like a giver or a taker? A giver. And, and he gave his only son. He gave his own life. And who did he do it for? Yeah, for us. Not for some, you know, large conceptual view of the world. He did it because he loves you. And your God wants to be with you. Listen to this from Galatians chapter 1. It says, May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Jesus gave his life for our sins, just as God our Father had planned, in order to rescue us from this evil world in which we live. Does that sound like a giver or a taker? A giver says that Jesus gave his life for our sins, just like God had always planned. That when God created the world, he was thinking that he wanted to have a relationship with you. That he wanted to know you. That he wanted to be with you. And he understood exactly how messed up you are. And he understood all the things you would struggle with and all the ways that you would fail. And he knew from the beginning that he was willing to lay down his life so that he could be with you forever. And check this out from Ephesians chapter 2. We've talked about this quite a bit over the last, the last week or so. And it says, But God, who's rich in mercy, and, and he loved us so much that even when we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. Because it's only by God's grace that you've been saved. So God is rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that he gave us life, even though we don't deserve it. Just because he's merciful. Just because he can offer grace. And so let's jump back to Colossians 3.16, where we read, Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. And here's the emphasis for today. We need to let the truth about God, his goodness, and his greatness fill us up. Like it says here, fill our lives. Not try to squeak by getting the bare minimum. Not trying to just understand enough about God so we can get into heaven so we don't have to go to hell. But recognize that Jesus loves us so much and his message of hope is something that's so incredibly amazing that we can, should not be able to get enough of it. That every day we should be thankful that God has given us a day to be with him. That every breath we breathe we should recognize is for him and for his glory. That everything we do is for him. And, and we need to be willing, like Ansel did in the beginning, to take the whole bag instead of trying to just get by on one little bit. And I don't know about you guys, but there's been times in my life when I've tried to do that. When I've tried to just play the game enough squeak by on the bare minimum instead of really delving into, digging into who God is, what he, what he has done, and what it means to be a part of his family. And, and he has given us so much. There is no giver like our God. He loves us more than we can comprehend. But can I tell you, the relationship with him only works if it goes both ways. A one-way relationship never works. If one person loves another person at the school you go to, 
and they really want to have a relationship with them and they follow them around and they're with them all the time, but the other person doesn't love them back, that's not called dating, that's called stalking. And that's not good. It's freaky. Okay, so if you don't have a relationship with God, you know, if you're not loving him back, if you're not living for him, there's a problem. There's, there's a disconnect there. And so can I ask you, will you fill up your life with love for Christ, with an understanding of his message of hope, instead of just making him an add-on? Or will, will you choose to dig deep in a relationship with him instead of just being content with allowing him to be an acquaintance? And it really is time for you guys, young people, to step up and commit to loving and following the God who gave his life for you because he loves you. And there's really only one way to respond to this. And that's just by, by understanding that God has given us so much that we cannot help but wanting more and more of him. And when we get filled up with the message that he has for us, the good news, the gospel that saves us from God's wrath and from our sins and from our brokenness, we respond by praising him, living for him, and ultimately worshiping him. You know, um, we talk a lot about worshiping here and we sing a lot of songs and things like that, but really the basic understanding that you guys need to have about what it means to worship God is to understand what he's done for you and then to respond. You know, we always try to respond to things um, in the correct way. When you're hungry, you respond by eating a taco. Okay, when you're thirsty, you respond by drinking. If you happen to see Mr. Haynes in the hallway, you respond by running away. Okay? That's... That is a correct response. When we, see, when we see the one true living God and we understand what he's done for us, there is one response, and that's for us to say, God, you gave everything for me, and I'm going to give everything I've got back to you. And in Revelation chapter 5, there's a picture of the Lamb of Jesus, and it says that all power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing are for him only. God deserves all that. And yet, he chose to lay down his life for you. He chose to set that aside for you so that he could welcome you into his family. And our response is to turn to him, to give back to him, because he is the greatest giver ever. If you guys have any questions about what it, what it means to have this relationship with Christ, to understand more deeply about what he's done for you, or if you're just seriously confused about what I've been talking about since I put down that bag of candy, please talk to me or talk to your counselor because we are, we are seriously here to serve you. And any question you have about this is a good question. And any thoughts that you would love, like to share with anyone about this, your counselors want to listen to you. They want to talk to you. They are here for you. And this whole week, take every opportunity that you can get to grow and to learn and to follow Christ more. Do you guys know what I'm saying? Yes? All right, today we just kind of set the stage for this week. We're going we're gonna to get a little bit more involved. I want you guys to know, before Mr. Haynes comes back up and faculty gives you uh, announcements of where you're going to go and what you're going to do, that it does not matter one bit how well you do in your lessons or how well the orchestra or the band goes this week if, if you don't know what it means to be a follower of Christ. This, for you, if you go through and have a great experience here and learn a lot about music, but you fail to understand that the God of the universe wants you to be a part of his family. It's been a waste. The Bible talks about that, it, it, that for us, I just can't say enough. I cannot say enough about how clear God is that he wants you. So this week, if you don't know him, get to know him. If you're not following him like you feel like you should be, this is a time for a change. Because we don't want to just be people who have a fun camp experience. We want that. But we want to be people who have a fun camp experience that is also a life-changing experience because we are here and the God of the universe is working with us. Cool? All right, let's pray. Uh, dear Jesus, we just thank you so much for who you are, for what you've done for us, and the fact that you are an amazing giver. And the fact that you laid down your life for us, sinful, broken, and messed up people, is incredible. There is no other gift like it. 
And we ask that you would help us to dwell on that. And to dig into a relationship with you instead of trying to squeak by with the bare minimum. God, help us to respond to your gift by giving our lives back to you. We know that you are a great God and we know that you've called us to be your people. So this week, teach us to live like your people. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen.